Good morning, my name is Charlie Yunk. I am a, I'm a Vietnam veteran and a retired engineer and have lived in Escondido for over 30 years. But the thing that I'm most proud of is my three children and one grandson. The single most important thing in my life is the kind of world that I will be passing on to them. I'm deeply concerned about climate change and the existential disaster that will happen if we don't do everything possible to mitigate that disaster. Our CO2 level has recently passed 400 parts per million, anything above 350 parts per million. And that's my shirt, our shirt. Uh, will result in increase in global warming and climate change. There is something I can do today, and that is speak out against uh, the proposed Sandag ballot measure. My friends at, at 350 will touch on lots of other important points, but I'd like to talk about what already works and what we should expand upon. Technology is changing everything and is reducing travel requirements, telecommuting, teleconferencing, distance and online learning, autonomous vehicles, ride-sharing apps like Uber, we should be embracing these opportunities. <clears throat> Mass transit such as rail, trolley, and buses, uh, riding the Sprint or coaster, coaster is a real joy, reading, relaxing, Wi-Fi, great view. The trolley is electrical powered, no parking to worry about. Why not expand this service? Why not expand BRT, Bus Rapid Transit? Uh, Escondido Attaboy, uh, Sam and I uh, go back a long ways and uh, we don't agree on everything, but uh, he's done some great things. Uh, high density housing near the Sprinter Station, parking, green open space, near shopping and entertainment, walk in neighborhoods, enhance properties values. Make it easier to walk and bike to local shopping, schools, entertainment, etc. Open spaces, and I'm turning red here, but uh, uh, I love bike paths, walking trails, community gardens. What a joy it is to be able to walk without obnoxious sound, smell, diesel and gas vehicles, especially Harleys. Yes. Okay. And I love talking to my neighbors. So in summation, uh, keep... Can, part of who I am. I understand that we need well-maintained roads, but I don't believe that we need to expand them. I'm married to a former U.S. Air Force flight engineer, which meant <coughs> not being able to live in San Diego. There are no Air Force bases. And you can imagine that when we finally had the chance to move back, we did we raised our two daughters in the beautiful city of Vista these last 15 years. I was a paralegal and then worked for a number of years as the director of religious education at a church in Vista. I'm here to speak in opposition to this ballot measure. I have a slide that shows our current San Diego Ford plan, solid line, greenhouse gas emissions over time through 2050. This data is from Sandak's environmental impact report. The dotted lines are the greenhouse gas reduction targets by two governor's executive orders. I like to ask, um, if you could show me on this graph where this ballot measure puts us, does it bridge the gap? As a resident, property owner, and taxpayer, I'm asking if there's someone who can get that information for me, can there be more transparency on that? 44% of greenhouse gas emissions come from cars and light duty trucks. 69% of residents in San Diego County work outside the subregion they live in. This means that transit solutions apply to all of the county. In fact, that statistics point, points us to where we need solutions, and it's not a wider freeway. I've heard it said by staff and board members that this measure is 
I got it. I'm gonna have to remind you. Our last I'm best chance at getting a ballot in our past. This is our Thank best you. shot at more transit. Thank you. I've got to say, no way is it, it can't be. The okay, I'm gonna ask. Diego deserve an agency and board of directors that can address challenges as they come up. You're done. I'm going to ask for cooperation. Let me uh, share something with you. The chart that's up there, there isn't any county in California that would be meeting those requirements. And the reason why, this is what our plan does. What we are doing is a small part of what is happening in this state. I spent all day yesterday in a meeting in Sacramento going over greenhouse gas and the, what we are doing with the hundreds of millions of dollars that are coming in from the cap and trade program. If you look in isolation at any county, you'd probably find something that looks similar because it doesn't take into account. But the fact of the matter is the big regulations that are affecting us are coming from the state. And you expect San Diego County with its, our, its regional transportation plan to meet this is not understanding the playing field at all. With that, we'll continue with the next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Jean Peterson, and I live in La Mesa. And um, just to dovetail into um, <clears throat> what the speaker was just saying, um, just because other counties are not able to meet these um, targets does not mean that we shouldn't do our absolute best to meet these targets. Um, I oppose the Sandag ballot measure because I don't want to see freeways expanded. That's not a solution. It's not even a band-aid because it turns us backwards in terms of greenhouse gas reductions that are mandated by the state. So more freeways means more cars, more greenhouse gases, more climate change, which is unfair to all of our kids, including mine who are 12 and 15 years old, which is why I'm here they will inherit the problems that we fail to solve. I also oppose it because it's just not fair. It imposes a tax on everyone, including people who can barely make their rent. That's already a big problem in San Diego. Um, so I'm asking respectfully for you to please revise your plan to meet the requirements of state law on mandated greenhouse gas reductions. Thanks. Thank you. Next speaker, please. John is coming to the microphone. I've got, uh, looks like Ken Parker, Chris Barrasso, and Nancy Ann. Good morning. My name is John Mishno. I live in La Mesa and I work in IT and as a volunteer at Community Building. And I want to just take a moment to express appreciation to you for your work. Um, I know that this is a complex issue, and um, your job entails a great deal of responsibility for um, decisions with, in which there's different public opinions. I oppose the proposed Sandag ballot measure because it provides for expanding freeways, induces more cars on the road, and raises our greenhouse gas levels far beyond the safe limits and reductions required by the state. We want you to revise your plan and reassign funding sources to meet the requirements of the two executive orders on greenhouse gas reduction. Greenhouse gases are causing our planet to become too hot. This is causing all sorts of catastrophic problems with our water, air, and soil that we need to survive. Imagine if we took the roof off of this room and this building and we tried to work here and get some work done. And if the temperatures went up another 20 degrees, it would be really inefficient to work here in this room. And that's the kind of inefficiency that we're introducing to our world. Um, we need you to design a solution that is imaginative and visionary not just business as usual. Imperial Beach and Mission Beach are expected to face coastal flooding due to climate change. 
We're going to need to pay for that. You're building an inefficient system. Let's build a city and county that will be part of an efficient global system that sustains life. Okay, thank you. Next speaker, please. And could you give your name for the record? Good morning, I'm Ken Brucker. I live in Unincorporated Benita. Um, I am, I'm here to uh, speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance. Uh, it isn't just that I oppose it, it's insufficient. Um, as you can see, it's going to, the regional transit plan is not enough, is insufficient to contain the greenhouse gases that this uh, region emits. Uh, we have to compensate for, unfortunately, Tijuana, which, uh, you know, we share their air and we can't build a wall up there, um, up in the sky, so we have to compensate for that. Also, um, the thing, the thing I see whenever when I went through the ordinance and looked at it, the CEQA and NEPA exemptions, I believe, will be challenged. Um, it's another it's another trip to the courts, and that's something that this body uh, does far too much. They provoke these legal challenges, but also from the state, you're going you're not going to meet the um, regulations set by the governor. You don't need to do that. Uh, this region doesn't need that. And we could do that better. I think that we need more transit. In fact, a, a great quote that I like very much is uh, this from Enrique Peñalosa, who said that an advanced city is one where even is not one, excuse me, an advanced city is not one where even the poor can use cars, but rather where even the rich use public transportation. <laughs> Um, that's that, that's the kind of town I want to live in. I don't like sitting in cars. I just want to get to wherever I'm going and jump off. It'd be not, it, I wish it were easier for me to get on the uh, trolley to go wherever I want to. I would have taken it here uh, if I didn't have um, other commitments to, to pick up people uh, during the day. Um, so uh, we need to change this and add more public transportation, please. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Chris. Chris, good morning. My name is Chris Barroso. I'm an electrical engineer living in Old Encinitas. I am opposed to the proposed Sandeg ballot measure for at least three critical flaws. First and foremost is the measure's lack of a real response to our climate emergency. Second, the proposed transportation improvements do not positively impact most residents of the area. Third, the measure is paid for off the backs of middle income and poor people, those who benefit the least from this measure. Greenhouse gas emissions must be cut, at least reduced in line with the two executive orders. Instead of trying to make those with their heads in the sand happy, we need to call out the emperor that he is wearing no clothes. Pol fund public service announcements for the good, morality, and the necessity of the needs uh, of our climate emergency head on. Inform, don't obfuscate. The proposed 90, Route 94 widening and purple line do not adequately help middle income and poor people of the area. For example, the massive Veterans Administration facility in National City is not served by public transportation. Enough is enough with minority rule. California Proposition 13 was passed with a simple majority. This means it can be amended with a simple majority. A first section should be added to the proposed ballot measure, implementing a limited and specific repeal of Proposition 13 that will allow the transportation tax to pass with a simple 50% majority vote. Then the funding source should be changed to a tax on upper income and large corporations only. If Representatives Peters, Vargas, and Davis can sit on the House floor to show the serious consequences and ethical dimensions of gun safety, the least I can do is stand here and call on Sandag to lead on this most moral issues preserving our home planet for future generations. As President Obama said, when our children's children look us in the eye and ask if we did all we could to leave them a safer and more stable world with new energy sources, I want to be able to say, yes, we did. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. And Nancy, as you're getting ready to speak, I'm going to call Jean Costa and Masada Dankenhaus. Stephen House. Good morning. Um, I'm asking you to oppose. Your Sand name is, please. My name is Nancy Yen. I live in the Mira Mesa neighborhood of San Diego City. I oppose the Sand Egg ballot measure because it encourages greater automobile use, which directly contradicts California's goal of statewide re 
reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. Freeway expansion is not only expensive, but short-sighted. With the increasing popularity of ride-share programs like Lyft and Uber, the rate of private car ownership is going down, not up. Even automobile manufacturers recognize this trend. GM, Toyota, Volkswagen, and BMW, along with companies like Apple, Google, and IBM, are investing billions of dollars in automated ride-sharing services where any transportation need can be served by an automated car summoned by an app. If you really want to prepare the San Diego region for the future, don't continue to invest in the obsolete. Sandai needs to instead continue, instead of continuing its futile attempt to mollify its critics, most of whom do not use transit anyway, it needs to look forward to future technologies, not the past. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Jean Costa. I'm a retired high school teacher from La Mesa. The city of San Diego has the strongest enforceable cap climate action plan of any large city in the US, and yet it may not be able to meet all of the greenhouse gas emission goals because you, San Diego, are not doing your part. You, who are supposed to represent the people of the entire county, seem dead set on doing as little as you possibly can to address the most serious problem we face as human beings in the 21st century. Your lack of commitment to strong actions to drastically decrease the greenhouse gas emissions caused by our outmoded, unhealthy transportation system by prioritizing freeway expansion instead of public transit tells me that you are denying the urgency and the necessity of doing whatever it takes to avoid the worst effects of our climate crisis. Even the corporate-owned media is reporting on the millions of dead and dying trees and the warmer winters, which allow insects like the bark beetles to survive on the drought and decreasing snowpack, the warming waters of the oceans, and the thousands of young sea lions that had to be rescued because their mothers had to travel farther and dive deeper to find food. These events, instead of public transit, you're doing freeway expansion. Uh, rarely does the media even mention climate change when it talks about these events. Although it did happen yesterday on one channel, one man mentioned it, and immediately his partner said, I don't want to talk about climate change. And Thank I heard a voice in the distance say, Thank you. We're going to get into trouble. Thank you. Ma'am? There's a yellow light that comes on. You have 30 seconds when that light comes on. We're trying to work so everybody can speak. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Masada Dizenhaus. I live in La Mesa. I'm here because the plan passed earlier this year, like the one before it, does not come close to meeting the greenhouse gas emission reduction targets that climate science demands and which the state requires in its executive orders. It also does not do enough to prioritize transportation options for disadvantaged communities or provide for a smooth transition to local green union jobs. I'm here because it's our responsibility to the next generations to preserve a healthy, prosperous, and environmentally stable place for them to live. Or as Pope Francis puts it, to preserve our common home. And science tells us we will not do that by expanding freeways. We only have a small window of time to keep carbon in the ground and transition to clean energy. Put simply, the existing SANDAC plan and the proposed ballot measure take us in the wrong direction. Our children and our grandchildren will look back at this time and will ask, who stood up for them? This is about our values as a society. This is about justice. You have a choice, we have a choice. I urge you to choose vision and leadership to choose innovation and clean energy, to choose equality and opportunity, and to choose transit and active transportation over highways. 
to choose a smooth and just transition to well-paying local green jobs governed by sound labor contracts, to choose to preserve our common home. I urge you to stop fighting for your plan in the courts, to revise the transportation plan so it meets climate requirements and prioritizes access for disadvantaged communities. I urge you to choose justice. Today is also about the choice that each of us makes as individuals in a society. And the choice I have made today is one that does not come easily to me. I am by nature shy and non-confrontational, but this moment in human history gives each of us an increasingly clear choice. And my cho choice is to no longer stand by as we move inexorably towards Thank tipping you. points that will change Thank our planet you. forever. Like inspiring leaders who have come before us, it is now up to each of us to say, group of speakers. I would hope they'd be more respectful, not only of this board, but of the people that are waiting to speak. I, uh, it's sort of beyond me that I, if I were trying to convince somebody of the wisdom of my uh, comments to show the behavior that this group has shown so far this morning. Uh, everybody has an opinion here. We would like to hear those. Your individual opinion is important to you. We understand that. But we want to hear everybody's, and we want to do it in a timely fashion so we can proceed with this meeting. Good morning. I'm Janina Moretti. I'm a current <laughs> resident of University City. I moved to San Diego almost 10 years ago now to get my PhD in biochemistry from UCSD, and now I teach uh, community college chemistry. I'm here today because my understanding of the climate crisis and my conscience demands it. I was proud to be a San Diegan um, this December when the San Diego City Council passed an ambitious and bold climate action plan that makes San Diego um, a leader in addressing the climate crisis. But I'm afraid we will not be able to meet those um, ambitious and necessary goals um, without a transportation, a regional transportation plan um, that lives up, um, that reduces emissions um, as we know that we need to. Um, I acknowledge that meeting the requirement, the state requirements, will be difficult. However, it's impossible to change the laws of physics and chemistry um, that um, that you know that are working in our atmosphere. That is, a, um, it's impossible to change those laws, and they have set limits, and that's what these state requirements are reflecting. These limits that we cannot pass if we want to um, continue to have a planet that is nice to live on. Um, I urge you, please do the right thing. Respect these limits. Um, we, that's what we all we all need to do to continue with business as usual. Um, will lead to catastrophically bad consequences for future generations. Um, please do the right thing. I urge you to do the right thing. Thank you. Next speaker, please. <coughs> Good morning. My name is Felinda Polliner, and I live in Scripps Ranch. I have three daughters and two young grandsons, and I'm here today to oppose this measure. Next year will be my 29th year teaching seventh graders life science with an emphasis on sustainability. My seventh graders want to conserve energy. Many of them have encouraged their families to install solar panels and transition to hybrid or electric cars. But when they look to public transportation, they encounter roadblocks because most of their homes are too far from a bus line or require too many bus transfers. A student living on my street in Scripps Ranch, for example, would need to walk or bike three miles to catch a bus. I can tell you that these seventh graders do not want to expand the city's highways. 
They do not believe that it is fair to tax people who cannot afford an additional tax, but do, who do live with the ill effects of greenhouse gas emissions every day. They do recognize that we need to make major changes immediately to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by increasing public transportation and to achieve the executive orders issued by our governor, Jerry Brown, and our mayor, Kevin Faulkner. They do want to be able to do their part to improve sustainability in San Diego. I am speaking for those seventh graders when I implore you to revise your plan. Scientists have made it crystal clear that we must reduce greenhouse gas emissions dramatically in the next 20 years if we want to avert catastrophic, irreversible changes to our planet. I just can't stand by while we lock in a future for our precious kids that is less healthy, less safe, and less economically stable than the one we inherited from our parents. Seventh graders understand this catastrophe. Okay. Why don't the Thank adults? You. Seventh graders are willing to act. Se seventh graders would see that red light blinking too. <laughs>